Hey there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Michelle, you're watching The Encouraging Word. Today, I wanna read from you from the book of James. It is such a good book. If you've never read out of the book of James, I highly recommend. It's such a practical book in the New Testament that of course is written by James and it's got so many quality, good advice, just practical advice for how to live this Christian life, which is very difficult at times. And um, so today, mainly what I want to talk about is, you know, in my quiet time, I was reading James and a, the part that talks about the mouth, <laughs> the power of the tongue. And so I'm going to be reading you um, James and it's chapter three and it's titled The Taming of the Tongue. And so I'm going to read you scripture right now. Just follow along with me if you want. We're in chapter three, verse one. And we're going to talk about the power of our tongues. And as believers, as Christians, how can we use our tongue? How can we use our speech and the motives really of our heart? Because out of our heart, out of our mouths flows really what we think in our heart. And, and, and the things that we have in our heart come out of our mouths, basically. So I just want to talk about that today. Um you know, if, if something that the Holy Spirit brings up today concerning your mouth or my mouth, then let's just receive what God has to say to us about our mouths. Let's just go ahead and, you know, it might be that God convicts us, you know, it might be that God convicts us of something that an area of growth for us <laughs> using our mouth and, um, or it may be that God just highlights how good you're being in this area and it's confirmation that you're walking on this path rightly with the Lord. Either way, I just feel like it's going to bless us today. So let's get into it for today. Okay, so James chapter 3 verse 1. Follow along with me, okay? It says, not many of you should become teachers. Ooh, that's speaking to me. <laughs> that's speaking to all of us who have a gift of teaching, you know, who like to teach God's word. Okay, let's listen why. That's why it makes a big difference who you're listening to on YouTube and who you're receiving your encouragement from and your edification from and your, you know, your doctrine from, your theology from. It makes a difference. It really, you need to be careful too and grow in discernment as a Christian of who you should be following, who you shouldn't be. Be very mindful of the Holy Spirit when he's speaking to you and he may say, hey, you know what? I know in the past for me, I have listened to certain teachers. I've been walking with the Lord since 2010 is when I got saved at the end of that year. And early in my Christian walk, I would listen to certain teachers and my ignorance and naivety, like I did not know about certain things being wrong. Or since then, I've just I've just grown in spiritual discernment of, of correct doctrines and correct theology. And so as you grow... We should always be discerning things that we're learning and people we're following. And we should always um, be good Bereans of, God word, of God's word, where, you know, God specifically tells us that the Bereans were good because what they did is they went in their word to see if what they were being told was accurate and true. And so anytime you listen to a teacher... Um, it is also your responsibility, not just the teachers. The teachers is between them and God, and they're accountable for what they're teaching you. But you, as a student of God, as a disciple of God, are also responsible for what you're feeding your spirit and to grow in discernment yourself and to know what are the red flags to look out for and, and such of that. So anyways, this is a good reminder for us that. So not many of you should become teachers my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. So anyone who teaches, anyone who preaches and teaches is going to be, uh, is going to be judged more strictly. We are all, we all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect. Well, God's word always also tells us that none of us are perfect, only God. So that means that we're all going to stumble. We're all not perfect. We're all going to make mistakes. We're all growing in the things of God and we're all being sanctified through our whole lifespan. And so we're going to, we're going to, we're going to be wrong sometimes. And there's only one good 
that's perfect and that's God, okay? And it says um, he's able to keep his whole body in check. And then verse three says, when, oh, so here we're getting into the speech part, okay? And this is could be so applicable for you and for me, right, for real. So when we put, when we put bits into our mouth, when we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we turn the whole animal. So the bit that goes in the horse's mouth is used to direct the animal, okay? You can turn it. You, anyone who rides horses or deals with cattle or anything like that, you would know that. It makes... The bit makes the animal go where they want them to go. Or he talks about ships. He says, or takes take a ship as an example. Although they are large and they're driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants it to go. So this huge ship is actually steered and directed by something very small, right? And then now it's going to go into what? the tongue is and how small that is too. Likewise, the tongue is a small, a small part of your body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil amongst the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire and in itself set on fire by hell. Ooh wee, you guys. And so that is basically a warning to all Christians and all mankind, really, that our tongues are so powerful. Our tongues are powerful in the fact that they can ruin people's lives. They can ruin our lives. They can ruin situations in our, in our relationships and friendships that we have. Our tongue is extremely powerful in that way that it can chase, change the course of things that are, are happening in our lives. Others can have a negative effect of us. Others can have a positive effect on us by the power of the words they're speaking to us or over us and that we're speaking to them or over them. And so, you know, words are powerful in that type of way. And it's talking about how the tongue, you know, it, it's just a small little part of the body. You know, in comparison to the rest of us, it's a small little part of the body, but it has such great power. It has such great power because it can build up and or it can tear down, right? How many of you have had people speak such terrible things over you or to you or behind your back and have slandered you and you have taken that in when you found out about it and you have, it has affected you so badly. It has wounded you. It has hurt you. It has set your heart in this season of depression or anxiety or fear or rejection. It has caused you to stumble or to hold back and not move forward with things. Um, it has made you feel judged and judgment that is overly critical and mean-spiritedness. And then how many times have you in your own life you know, after the fact, you're like, oh gosh, I really didn't do a good job at that. I totally, uh, I, I said some hurtful things to this or that person. I said hurtful things and I said them out of anger and I didn't mean it. And then you have to sit there and apologize and humble yourself. But even though you apologize or others apologize to us when they hurt us, it still doesn't take away the pain that that was caused by, by the power of the tongue and the negativity and the mean spiritedness. Okay. So we want to, as Christians practice forgiveness of others and of ourselves, right? We want to walk in forgiveness, but there's consequences to our sin. There's consequences to saying bad, mean spirited things out of anger, things out of resentment, things out of being bitter, um, things out of jealousy and strife and anger, okay? And so this is just such a good reminder for us to just know that our tongue is so important. I mean, think about a parent if you're a parent. My tongue is so important to build up my children, my tongue has the power to make my kids feel so encouraged and so loved and so um, special, 
you know, and important to me and to God. I have that power with my tongue to speak truth and speak life over them. You know, I have the power in my tongue to speak to my husband in such a way that is so encouraging to him, so edifying to be like, hey, I appreciate this about you. I appreciate that about you. You're a great provider. You're a hard worker. Hey, I love how you did that today. You know, or just, or we can do the opposite with our tongue as parents and, and, and spouses. We can tear down each other. We can hurt each other. We can wound our children. How many children who are now walking around as adults have been so wounded by things their parents have told them? Things that they said to them, like, you're never going to amount to anything. You're never going to be anything in your life. You're, you are worthless. You're not valuable. I don't love you. You know, just those things are so so hurtful and people walk with that all their lives into you know becoming a um, an elderly person and those people still grieve by the things and the trauma of the words that happened to them 50 years before you know so we should recognize that our tongue is very powerful it and we should as christians want to be life givers you know god calls us to be salt and light in this world he calls us to you know, sprinkle that on everyone, especially people that we love, you know, especially people in our everyday world, especially people that we have somewhat of influence over, that we should really guard our mouths. We should really think about what we're thinking about. We should really take a moment. And another part of James talks about being slow to speak. We should be quick to listen and slow to speak. And that's a really good thing to practice because We want to be slow to speak so that way we can think about what we're thinking about and we can guard our mouths before we say, ooh, we, I was about to say this or that to to that person or to you. And I, you know, let me hold it back. Let me think. Let me marinate on this because, you know, feelings change (laughs) and our feelings can change. And sometimes we say the most meanest things, the most ungrateful things, the most terrible attitudes when we're in a certain place and we just let our mouths and our tongue run wild. So I hope that that makes sense to you. It goes on to talk about, I just want to real quickly wrap it up here. Again, it's, it's talking about how it can corrupt us. It corrupts our, it corrupts relationships. It corrupts marriages. It corrupts um, parent and child relationships. You know, Um, it corrupts just your life. You could be saying some terrible things, some things out of anger. You can ruin your your career. <laughs> if you talk negative and you talk poorly back to someone and you're disrespectful and you're mean-spirited or you're a gossiper or you're a slanderer and you get caught, you can get terminated. And so your tongue has so much power over your future in that way. And so it's good to be mindful to know that, hey, you know what? I need to get a better control over this little piece of of my body. You know, like I need to work on it. I need to be more um, allowing the Holy Spirit to give me self-control, you know, control over my speech, control over my thoughts. And as they come in, for me to learn how to filter some stuff and not just let everything out of my mouth and and for me to understand that not everyone is going to receive the way that I want to say this or that to them and to be just very cognizant and think about what I'm thinking about and how I want to say things and to be saying things with love. <laughs> Say things with love. Yes, we can tell people the truth and they need to hear the truth, but we need to say it sprinkled with love. And so that's such an important, powerful thing to to wrap our minds around. And it goes on to talk about animals and birds. It it says in verse 7, all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. Okay, the taming. But then what does it say about the tongue? But no human being can tame the tongue. Ooh, we. And it is restless evil, full of deadly poison. It's deadly poison. Why? Because you're talking negative stuff. You're using your mouth to tear down others. It's going to put poison in your life. Guess what? People are not going to want to be around you. (laughs) People are not going to want to hang out with you. People are not going to trust you. You're not going to be trustworthy. You're going to be somebody that is not anyone that anyone wants to have any quality time with. Okay. And it's going to be spewing all kinds of poison in your life. Your tongue can be doing that. And so it's hard for us 
we who can tame their tongue, you know, but I believe with the power of the Holy Spirit, we can get better control over our tongues. We're never going to be perfect. We're never going to not make a mistake. We are broken sin sinners. And yes, we're saved and blood bought by the blood of Jesus and his sacrifice on the cross. But hey, we are a work in progress and we are going through a sanctification all of our lives and we're going to have ups and downs and we're going to have trials and tribulations and we're going to fail that that sometimes. But the most important thing is to know that we have the Holy Spirit in us. He can work through us. He can lead and guide us into all truth. He can help us to have better self-control over our mouths. He can help us to change our mindsets. He can help us to be more positive when we need to be and not, and just stop being such, some of us are Debbie Downers. Some of us just look at, you know, the, the most critical thing, like we look at a situation through critical lens. We look at a situation and we don't see any good in it where God is like, Hey, you didn't even, you're not even grateful for what I did right there. You're not even grateful. You're not even thankful. You don't see what I just did and you don't recognize it. Some of us don't recognize what, when God does amazing things in our lives. And so I just feel like this is a good reminder for myself. This is a good reminder that my mouth is very powerful in the fact that it can influence not only myself, not only my husband and my children and my family and the people in the, in the sphere of my influence, but you guys, it can influence you guys. It can encourage you or tear you down. And every single one of us has that type of power that God has given us in our mouth. And we need to be aware of it. We need to be cognizant of it. And so let's just pray about that right now. Father God, thank you so much, God, for reminding us that our tongues are powerful. Thank you for your word of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you live in us. You bring all these things to our um, acknowledgement. And Lord, I just pray that any of us who are struggling in this area of our tongue, perhaps we've hurt other people with it. We've hurt ourselves with our self-negative thoughts. And Lord, you know, we've just caused damage probably with our tongue and we just haven't practiced good self-control. We haven't thought about the things that we need to think about. And we haven't guarded ourselves from just, you know, being tempted by the enemy to, to do certain things that we know really is contrary to your word, Lord. So please forgive us, God. Help us to be more like you. Help us to walk in freedom in the power of our tongue in the sense that the things that come out of our mouth are encouraging and edifying. And yes, there is a time and a season for constructive criticism, but let it be sprinkled with love, God. Let it be sprinkled with peace and love that comes through the power of the Holy Spirit. We just love you so much, Lord, and we thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys, I hope that blessed you. Little tiny thing about the tongue. I'll see you next time. Make sure you like and subscribe. And hey, if you like James, I have done a whole Bible study about two years ago, but I have a playlist on it, and it is through the whole book of James, and it's verse by verse, and it's really good. And I hope that you guys go check that playlist out. I'll see you in the next video. And hey, I love you. I love you with a, a, a powerful love for the love that God has in me for you. And you are special. You are important to God. You are blessed by God and highly favored. No matter how you feel, no matter where you're at, no matter how you are in your walk with God, you need to know that God has good plans for you, that he's with you. He never le leaves you. He never leaves you. He never leaves his children. He's always with you. You keep up the good work. You keep fighting for him because he's always fighting for you. You keep doing those things that you know that he's calling you to do. You keep pressing into the Lord. You keep serving the Lord. The Lord so loves you. He's so proud of you. You are just exactly where you need to be, but God is going to still keep growing you. You keep plugging. Hey, if you're here and you want to watch this video, that is just another sign because the people who love God and want to be more like God are going to surround themselves and fill them up with God's word and people who speak about God and people who love God. And, and you're, you know, the fact that you're here listening to this right now is just confirmation for you to say to yourself to stop being so hard on yourself and to realize that you're precious to God and that he's so proud of you for just going deeper and being interested in the things of God, being interested about, you know, pressing into him and learning how James says for us to control our tongues, 
right? So if you're here, just give yourself a break. Give yourself a little pat on the back. Praise God. Worship God because he's meeting you right where you're at. He's leading and guiding you through the power of his spirit. And he loves you with an everlasting love. And I'm so glad that you're my brother or you're my sister. All right, guys. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today.